In the previous episode, we saw how quickly you can publish the contents of a data source to InDesign with the help of the Easy Catalog plugin. In this episode, we are going to see how to import the data stored in our data source into Easy Catalog and how to configure it in order to improve our catalog automation process. Let's start by creating an exact replica of what the final catalog is going to look like. This sample document will represent the size and layout of all the graphic and typographic elements that will be included in the final design. The purpose of this sample document is twofold. First, to evaluate the design before automation begins, and second, and perhaps more importantly, to define all the paragraph, character, table, and object styles that we may need. It is important to note that with each new release of InDesign, more and more advanced features are introduced, such as nested styles, options to automatically fit images, the ability to automatically resize a text box, etc. The point I want to make is that the more familiar you are with the application, the easier it will be for you to work with Easy Catalog. Also, note that many features introduced by Easy Catalog some years ago are now implemented directly by InDesign. In these cases, my recommendation is to always use the settings provided by InDesign. That way, you can more easily edit an automated layout to put the finishing touches on your catalog. Therefore, we will first display a brief summary of the characteristics that make up a category, accompanied by a representative picture. Below each category, we will place a list of all the products, grouped by brand name. Each product table is made up of two header rows and one or more body rows. Use the table, table option, table setup dialog box to set the number of header rows, the number of body rows, and the number of footer rows for the table. Finally, we have created and correctly applied all the paragraph styles used by the text in our document. This way, we will always be able to make last-minute retouchings, such as changing the body text, the font used, etc., without having to redo the entire catalog. Now that we have a sketch of the catalog ready to go, let's use Easy Catalog to import the data into InDesign. All catalog data has been exported from the original database into an Excel formatted document. This makes it easier to check the data structure and formatting in case of problems during the import process. The only mandatory requirement for our document is that one of the columns must have a unique value for each row and therefore must not have any duplicates. This value is called a key field. For this exercise, we are using an Excel spreadsheet, but remember that Easy Catalog can work directly with the data stored in a database, a comma or tab separated text file, a JSON file or an XML file. After the import process, Easy Catalog creates a data panel with exactly the same look and feel, regardless of the data source. To import the data stored in our spreadsheet, select File New Easy Catalog Panel and choose one of the options depending on the data source file type. In our case, we must select the New Excel Data Source option. Now Easy Catalog asks us to select a valid Excel file. So I choose the Excel spreadsheet and click Open. The name of our data panel is the first field that needs to be filled in. This name will be displayed in the Easy Catalog panel and in the application menus. So I advise you to use a name that is as descriptive as possible. Let's call it Miniaturix Catalog. You can check the path to the file in the location area of the dialog box. Press the reveal button to open the folder where we saved the document. If we have the wrong version of the document, or if we simply want to select a different one, we can press the select button and select a new one. The Content section allows to select the sheet you want to work with. As you may recall, an Excel document is a book containing one or more worksheets. Our document contains only one sheet, which Easy Catalog has already selected for us. To avoid importing a wrong data structure, it is advisable to check the Ignore rows with one cell of data box. 
This way, we avoid importing rows often used as subheadings in Excel. Finally, we can verify that the import is working as expected by examining the data in this small sample table. Note that it only shows the first six rows of data. And everything looks pretty good to me. Now we can customize each field's behavior and appearance, or change it later. For example, in the case of the image column, we can ensure that the field's content is a valid file name or file path. To help Easy Catalog find the image you are referring to, simply click on the column, then click on the Option to Bond button. And then click on the Choose button of the Picture Contents section to specify where to search the photos of each category. Notice how we can set many of the properties that the image will have when placed in the InDesign document, including scaling, alignment, and even the ability to use a Photoshop clipping path. The extension field is very useful when our data does not contain the file extension. We can type the extension to search for, such as .tiff or .jpg. Additionally, if our images exist in two or more formats, we can specify each one by separating the extensions with a semicolon. Easy Catalog will then look for image files with the name provided by our field and the .tf extension. If it does not find it, it will look for a .tsd file extension. And if it doesn't find it either, it will look for a .jpg file extension. In our example, we are going to write. JPG because that is the format in which the images will be provided to us. The replacement image field is also very useful. If Easy Catalog cannot find an image with one of the provided extensions, it will place the file we specify here instead. This way, we can automate a catalog even if we don't have all the images yet. Later on, when we do have them, we will be able to update the document and they will be automatically placed in the appropriate place. Click on the OK button to close the dialog box. In the case of the product price field, I want Easy Catalog to automatically insert the dollar sign. So I click on the Options button, and in the Format section, I select Currency, Dollar. Let's look at some more formatting options for the remaining fields. Regarding the new icon, our database does not really tell us which file to use. It just returns a no or a yes. How do we get that value to convert to an image file? Very easy. Easy Catalog provides a powerful text cleansing function. It's like a search replace utility on steroids. In this case, we want to replace the word no with nothing, a space, and the word yes with the name of the file that represents the new icon. So we enter the following code. No, equal sign, and type nothing. This tells Easy Catalog to replace the word no with nothing. Or in other words, to delete the contents of the field if it contains the word no. The syntax of this formula is very simple. To the left of the equals sign, we type the text we want to search for, and to the right of it, the text we want to replace it with. But that's not all. Easy Catalog can perform multiple search replace operations chained together. Just type a semicolon at the end of each one. So now I'm going to type a semicolon and search for the word yes to replace it with a file name new.ai, an illustrator file. I type the semicolon again, and we're almost there. Since this is an image file, we need to tell Easy Catalog where to find it. So we select the picture content option again and specify the folder where to look for the file new.ai. By default, if the file is not found, Easy Catalog will mark the image field as an error. In our example, if the value of the field is no, we don't want to display an image, so Easy Catalog will display an error message that is not really an error. To avoid this unwanted behavior, simply go to the Advanced tab and uncheck the Flag Empty Pictures as Errors option. Click OK, and we are done. As you can see, Easy Catalog has replaced the word yes with the provided file name and emptied the fields with the word no. Finally, 
we just need to tell Easy Catalog which field is the key field, the field that contains a unique value for each record. In our example, it's the product code field. So I select it and click on the key checkbox. Easy Catalog is usually smart enough to automatically detect which field is the key field of your data. As you can see, the key icon to the left of the name indicates that this is the key field. Great. We are done configuring our field options, so I click the OK button to start the import process. Easy Catalog has correctly loaded the data and has created a data panel with the name we specified in the previous step. As you can see, the panel looks like a spreadsheet with rows and columns of data. Each row contains one record of data. Looking more closely at our data, we see that the first records are in the same category, classic cars. And if we take a look at the brand column, we can see that there are a number of different brands for the same category. Finally, if we focus on a single brand, we can see that it is made up of a number of products. In other words, Easy Catalog displays a flat view of the data. But in order to work in a more logical way, it is essential to group the data into logical groups. For this, I will use the Group option. We are interested in grouping our records by categories, so we double-click on the Product Category field. It now appears in the Grouping Configuration section of the dialog box. This triangle means that all categories are displayed in ascending, alphabetical order. To change the order, simply click Descending. And for each category, I want the products grouped by brand, so I double-click the Product Brand field. Now, Easy Catalog is going to display under the same group all the records that have the same category value in it. And within each category, it will group all records that have the same brand value. Click OK, and you can see how Easy Catalog has grouped the panel data according to our grouping configuration. Now it's much easier to understand and navigate our data. If we take a closer look at the first category, the classic cars, we can see that there are 10 brands in it. The number of subgroups within each group is shown in parentheses. If we display the brand Exoto design, it shows three products. And as you can see, the groups are sorted alphabetically. However, it turns out that I'm not interested in sorting the categories in alphabetical order, but rather in using the category order field. So I open the group dialog again First, I remove the two fields we previously used in the grouping. In their place, I select the Category Order field. Press OK, and the panel is now sorted properly. There is a catch. As a designer, a number doesn't really mean nothing to me. So I'd like to see the category name instead of the category ID value. No problem. I open the Group dialog again, click the first group name, check the Display Alternative field as header box, and select the Product Category field from the drop-down menu. Click OK. And now, yes. Easy Catalog displays the category names sorted according to the value of the Category Order field. Good. Now that we have the data imported and grouped, we are ready to start automating the catalog. But we'll leave that for the next episode. Don't miss it.